uh, senior affordable housing and the Santa Cruz development agreements. This is something that um, a lot of our seniors thought was a protection for them. They thought that because they, they, there was always discussions to them about how um, some of the senior apartments that were being built had restrictions on them that would help them with their rent structure. But nobody had ever seen any of these uh, development agreements. So, and, and, in, and in some cases, when I spoke with some of the seniors at the senior center, they were um, fearful of bringing the subject up because right now they said, well, if I bring the subject up to my uh, landlord, he'll evict me. And um, so I said, well, I'll, I'll take it. I'm going to go find out. So bringing you up to speed from last month, um, the rent increases are becoming a big problem for some seniors because I was surprised of how many seniors talked, I talked to uh, were, uh, they were, they are a widowed. And um, the only thing that they lived on was Social Security. And of course, you know that even if you, both of you work, both of you work and, and one partner passes away, you lose one of the Social Security payments. You keep the one that's the highest, but you lose one. And in many cases, the Social Security payments that they're getting aren't the maximum. So here you have a lot of, uh, um, or I don't know if it's a lot, but I hear, I hear from some of the uh, seniors, well, you know, I'm, I'm getting 1000 a month, and all of a sudden my rent is going above 1000 a month. And um, so what's the answer? You heard it last month where some people say, well, we're going to help you guys double up. Well, you know what? I, I know a lot of seniors that don't want to double up, right? I mean, they've lived alone for so long, they don't want to you know, double up in, a, in an apartment again. Or they have to leave the area because then you go somewhere where the rents are less or they end up on a street. So we were going through uh, the uh, Bouquet Senior Apartments and I went out online to see what it is that they were uh, paying. And for a one bedroom, one bath, to average 600 square foot apartment, they're paying close to a thousand a month. Okay, that's a lot of money. And, uh, but some of the senior apartments were built using a Santa Clarita city development agreements. And the question was, what really does that do? And in some cases, we already knew that, that if, if, the, if the, the developer agreed to build senior housing, affordable housing here in Santa Clarita, they would get a reduction in their development fees in exchange for building that senior housing. And um, so the question became, was the particular apartment that they were living in built uh, using one of these unique developments? And, and we went after the senior, uh, the Canyon, the Bouquet Canyon senior apartments. I requested it from the city. And all of a sudden they said, well, wait a minute, we've got to go find it. Because this was done all the way in 1998. So James Chow went through and he uh, drug up the uh, information and he provided it to me. And I received it. So I had this development agreement. I could read it. And um, it, it sounded at one point where, like, it, it, it was really something that would help the seniors. First of all, it was valid. It's a 30-year agreement. It says you're going to agree to do this for 30 years. You're going to have a senior facility. Residents are required to be 55 or older. Okay? All right? Then it said affordable low-income housing are with rents restricted to 30 to 60 percent of the area median income, and I and I and I said, well, how how, how does that work? How, how do you do that? How do you make that calculation? And um, nobody knew. I thought that's really interesting. You made an agreement that you make. You're the city. You made an agreement. You want this done, um, but you don't know how to how to figure out what the uh, the requirements are. And then, of course, uh, it included home delivered meals program provided by the committee with the Committee on Aging as a partner. And we had a member of the Committee on Aging here last last month, and they said, "Well, we don't really have that agreement with them anymore. Um, 
Uh, and, and I said, well, you know, I, I don't know what, whether you do or you don't. It's not up to me to tell you you have one or you don't have one. I'm just going to ask the city and, and if, if uh, you, you know, let the city uh, uh, go through and enforce their own rule. So um, I, I contacted them. And I and I sent a, a letter to to James, and I said, "Thank you providing for, for thank you for for providing me with the development agreement." I was able to share the information with the senior uh, uh, advisory board, but some questions came up, and because of what the Committee on Aging folks were saying to me, I said, "Has the City Council passed any subsequent resolutions after the 1998 agreement?" So, in other words, this 1998 agreement was voted on by the City Council, put in placed by the city council now, have they updated it? And what formula to use to calculate what the maximum rents could be? And what element of the city staff is responsible for enforcing the conditions of agreement? Now you can see this was in April, right? So here we are, we're in May, and I get back a, uh, an email from Aaron Lay. And it says, while the city's 1998 regulation agreement references affordability, the city does not have a separate agreement with the developer owner of this project relating to affordability. I was a little confused. The, ta the California Tax Credit Allocation Committee in, this, in the state of California's Treasury's office is the agency which has a regula regulatory agreement for the Bouquet Canyon seniors regulating affordability. The TCAC agreement should be should contain the information you're looking for. Contact the state. I, I was really confused. I said, "Wait a minute! Wait, 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 wait a minute! You know, I'm trying to read this thing in English, and now you're telling me that 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 you don't have this. The kind I don't understand this. So anyway, I called her up, and 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 we had a long conversation. And once I understood the situation. I could go back in a development agreement because now remember I'm not reading English, right? I'm reading legalese and city speak. And so I can understand what's going on. So here's the real story. And you'll see how this, uh, this all comes together. Anyway, uh, the questions that were actually answered was, was the 1998 Bouquet Senior Apartments Development Agreement ever updated? And they could not find any uh, uh, other action by the city council that updated that agreement. So I guess the answer is no, it has never been updated. But would the agreement be applicable if a new owner purchased the property? And the answer is yes. The agreement um, will stick with the property. You buy the property, you assume that agreement. Okay, so like when, when someone said to me, well, we don't, we, we don't have this agreement anymore. They're wrong. They really do. But let's see whether we really want to force them to comply. So can uh, over 55-year-old residents have a younger resident living with them? Because that's what the senior apartments are doing right now. If they, if they have a 55-year-old rent the apartment, then, then the, uh, it, it, the, uh, they allow anybody that lives with them to be under 55. So what happens is, is that um, maybe grandpa rents the apartment and brings in a mom and the kids, you know, his daughter and the kids. And the answer came back was really, really interesting. It says, unless specifically prohibited in the development agreement, yes, they can. So I thought, well, that's interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll carry that on. And I asked about the wording. The wording in our development agreement says, the project is restricted to persons 55 years of age. Does that specifically accomplish that prohibition? And of course, what's the answer I got is, I can't answer that for you. You have to go talk to the state and, <laughs> and talk to the tech credit allocation committee, right? Now, I, I'm, I'm not exactly giving this to you in the order that they, that they, that they gave me these answers, but I can, I can understand why they did it. Because uh, who benefits from the, this development agreement? Is it the seniors that, that, that benefit? No. The development agreement, here's what happens. The development agreement isn't an agreement between the city and the developer. It is a way of having the developer um, it, perform the actions required to obtain tax credits from the state. 
Now, if, uh, you know, when we, we have a financial guy here, you know, when we talk about all the weird financial stuff that goes on, what happens is, is now because you are building a senior apartment and you, and you build it and you, and you uh, uh, agree to abide by certain actions, the state will give you tax credits and you sell them. So somebody uh, would look at, look at these tax credits and they'd say, you know what, I, I, I'm running a big tax bill and I can buy these for 95 cents on the dollar. So they buy them for 95 cents on the dollar, but when they use them, they're worth a dollar. And what happens is the developer now has that 95 cents for every one of those tax credits to build a building. Isn't that amazing? Well, to help build a building. And what, the one place where the city got involved in this is the city uh, said, if you go and you, uh, and if you go and you accomplish those actions that will allow the state to give you tax credits, we'll waive a half a million dollars worth of bridge and thoroughfare fees. Well, that's that again, you know, that, that makes the building less expensive to build. Isn't it true, right? So who, who, who would, would enforce this thing for noncompliance? So if I'm, a, if I'm in the uh, 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 building and all of a sudden they have all kids in, in it, renting into it, what, what would I do, right? Well, if you actually read that one sentence in the agreement, it says, it's enforced in accordance with the laws of the state of California. Translation, you've got to go to the state, to the tax credit allocation committee. And if, in fact, they find that the developer or the owner of the property is no longer complying with those rules, they claw back their money. They claw back the tax credits. Well, that's interesting. And if the city decides that they're not complying with that, the only hook they have is to claw back their reduction in, in, in fees. Now, wait a minute. If that happens, is that going to benefit the seniors? I don't think so. So we're looking at the, the Committee on Aging. And they now say they have a, a defunct partnership and the partnership was going to supply uh, the Committee on Aging $70,000 a year to basically do what they're doing anyway. So who would pay that $70,000 a year? Well, certainly not the developer, right? Because what it says is it's payable solely from excess cash from the project after you pay all the other expenses, the, the mortgage, the loans, the blah, blah, blah. That's going to become a part of the rent, Right? Obviously, right? And so if we turned around and we said, okay, Committee on Aging, you're not doing your thing, we went to the, to the, to the, uh, to the state and the state said, oh, you've got to go pay them $70,000 a year, that would, in essence, raise their rent, $22 a month. That's not going to be very helpful when we want the rents to go down, right? So who does the development agreement benefit? The development agreements are, are there as an incentive for the property owners to build the apartment complex. Okay? They're awarded tax credits, which in fact they turn into cash, and they're awarded reductions in fees. And if we show them, we show them not to be com compliant with the requirements anymore, what, what are they going to do? They're going to raise the rent. Or maybe they'll say, okay, we're not complaining anymore, so we're not in this agreement anymore. We are now going to open this up to uh, regular rentals, and um, there's no reason for us to hold it down at all. So I don't think this development agreement was there to protect the seniors. It was there, if the, uh, it was there to uh, enhance the property owner's value. And if the property owners are found in violation of the development agreement, it costs the developers, or the owners now, money. And who would pay that money in the end? Well, the people that live there, right? Because, I mean, it, it, they, you know, it, even with a, a smart money manager like we have here, money doesn't just come out of the sky. The, uh, people that own apartment buildings collect money from people that rent the apartment buildings. And if it costs them more to, uh, to do it, they'll just raise the rent. And specifically, it works in an area where if they raise the rents, that they can have people move in. 
And if they can't, what do they do? They go bankrupt. And in either case, the seniors who are living there are not going to benefit. So um, I, I'm going to advise the, 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 the seniors to drop this. This is not something that while they've been told all this time and while they thought that someone had done something to protect them, it really doesn't. And uh, so I'm going to advise them to just drop this. This is not something they want to pursue. The best that they can get is a rent increase out of it. And um, I, I just, I'm really amazed of how much bad information was said about this. Once you know what I'm telling you now, once you know what the development agreement does and you go back and read it, now you can see, now you can see that what uh, Ms. Lay said is correct. So are there, are there any questions about this? No. Well, I, I'm sorry to report that, but that was the best I can do on that item.